Hello everyone, my name is Aditya Hemant and I'm going to talk about C groups in Linux. Now C groups are a very vast topic and it won't be possible for me to cover every aspect of them. But the goal of this video is to just give a general introduction of how they work and what they are. So firstly, what are C groups? C groups are a facility that is built into the Linux kernel that allows administrators to set limits on resource utilization. Uh, C groups are implemented using file systems and by creating hierarchical group, control groups aggregate and partition various processes and their children into hierarchical groups. This allows C groups to be used for resource management and allows and be efficient and quite useful. So we know what C groups are, but do we really need them? Let's uh, take an example. You can have a very basic operating system and it has various applications. And let's say that all these applications run without any restrictions. In this case, uh, it's possible that the system will work quite well without any problems. However, if the programs don't work well together, we can have various issues. Let's say that one of the processes has resulted in some kind of loop. And it, in this case, the process will continue to keep using resources, whichever resource that may be. And after some time, it will take so much resources that other processes will no longer be able to run. C groups allow us to fix this problem. They let us allocate and limit resources. So whether it's your CPU or memory or network bandwidth, input output access, all of this can be blocked and limited. So a particular process will only be allowed to use a set amount of this resource. Now these limitations are set in certain groups called control groups. That's where the word C groups comes from. And so you can set a limit on a control group and any processes running inside this group will inherit those limits. This lets it, this makes it very easy to allocate and maintain managed resources. Let's take a look at the core features that C groups provides us. Firstly, we have resource limiting. So C groups allow an administrator to ensure that any programs running on the system stay within a certain acceptable boundary. You can set this limit for CPU, RAM, input-output device accesses. We can configure groups to not exceed a specific memory limit or use more than some amount of processes or limit it to specific peripheral devices only. Another benefit of C groups is it allows us pri to prioritize. Now, it's a little different from resource limiting because we're not directly limiting the process itself. Uh, let's say, for example, we have two processes, process A and process B. Now, process e A is a more important process and we want it to keep running, whereas process B is uh, not as important. In this case, we can set priorities. So the priority of process A can be set to higher and B can be set to lower. In this case, let's say that uh, process A requires more memory to continue running. And process B is running at the same time as well. So uh, process B will get suspended and the resources from that will be allocated to process A and thereby allowing process A to continue running. We also have accounting, resource usage is monitored and measured. In case that some error happens, we can always go back and look at the logs and f that can help us find out what went wrong. Another important feature is process control. Groups of processes can be frozen, stopped or started at any time by C groups. Uh, this is done by the C groups freezer subsystem. Uh, which uses C groups to describe the tasks that have to be started or stopped by the batch job management system. 
Now all of these come together to provide a unified interface to us to manage processes and resources. Now let's take a look at how C groups are implemented. Firstly, before that, we should look at what subsystems and hierarchies are. So a subsystem, when we're talking about it in this context, is the resource controller. It is what's responsible for the allocation of any type of resource. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see many of the subsystems that are included in the C groups package. Depending on the kernel version and the distro you are using, these there may be more, however, these are some that will be present in all versions of C groups. Uh, block IO controls the input output blocks operations. The CPU subsystem is used to control access to CPU. CPU accounting reports the usage of CPU uh, resources. Devices is focused on various system devices. Freezer, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is related to suspending or resuming various C group processes. The memory system controls access to memory and also has features to report and log the usage of the memory. We also have net CIs, uh, which tags the various network packets received, gives them class IDs and other variables to allow a network traffic controller to make use of them. Now let's see what's meant by C group hierarchies. Now C groups are assigned in a hierarchical format. Uh, each subsystem starts off with its own hierarchy. That means there are separate hierarchies for the CPU, memory, block, IO, etc. These hierarchies are independent and when we create a new process, it will have a node in each of these hierarchies. Now, since C groups exist in a hierarchical format, uh, any limits or attributes that are defined for a higher level C group will be shared by any of its child C groups and any processes within them. All of C groups functionalities are accessed through file systems. Uh, the C group file system is a virtual file system and is used to create, remove, alter C groups. Now, C groups work on file systems as mentioned. This means that making a new child C group is very easy and can be done just by using make directory command. Uh, on this slide, we can look at an example of a C group hierarchy. So this one is a C group that uses both the CPU and the memory sub system. Uh, this is, you can see two levels in this hierarchy. The first being the CPU mem control group and the next two being CG1 and CG2. So this is what the structure of a C group hierarchy looks like. Uh, so we've seen what C groups are and how they're implemented. Uh, let's just take a look at an example of using C groups on a process. So in the first image, you can see all the various different things that are listed inside the C group uh, folder. Uh, you'll see various subsystems such as block input, CPU, CPU accounting, freezer, memory, devices, etc. So each of these uh, is its own hierarchy and created using file systems. So let's say that we want to create a control group that uses the subsystem memory. So in this case, we can use the cg create command. Uh, the syntax for it goes cg create dash g followed by the subsystems you want the c group to be in and then the name of the group control group uh, once we run this command we can go back and look inside the memory folder uh, in c groups and you'll notice that the CG cg1 folder has been created so we've created the control group but what about setting limits for it so in this case, as we're working on the memory subsystem, it has its own files uh, that you can edit to set various limits, such as the limit in bytes, the usage limits, and various other files that you can change values for. In this case, we want to make the memory limit 
and we want to set it to some 5 MB. So we simply have to edit that value inside the see inside the control group one. In in the first line, you can see the command that we use to store the value of 5 MB. The next two lines are just for checking whether the value has been updated. In this case, you'll see that it's not exactly 5 MB. That's because the kernel will uh, be setting it in multiples of whatever its minimum memory size is. And it'll set it to whatever the value gets to that's just below 5 MB. So let's try to run a process inside the control group. Uh, you can see the process I've used here. It's an infinite while loop that echoes hello world into the terminal every 20 seconds. Now we can make, we can run this directly inside the C group by using the CG exec command as follows. And you can see that the command is running and it will keep printing hello world every 20 seconds. But 5 MB is still a large amount of memory. Uh, for our process, let's try to set the limit a little bit lower and see what happens. So we'll change the limit instead to be 100 KB using the same commands we used earlier. And now let's try to run the function. In this case, you can see what happens. It runs once, hello world is printed, and then the process gets terminated. This happens because it has exceeded the memory limits that we have set. So that is just one direct example of how C groups can be used on a process. Uh, there's a lot more in depth that C groups goes, but uh, it's not possible to cover all of that. So my intention for this video is only to give a gist of what C groups is, how they are implemented and how you can use them. If you have any interest in C groups after this video, I recommend that you look up more about C groups. There are various, there's lots of documentation you can find about them and they go into a lot more depth. Thank you.